Good day, good evening, good morning, and good night. Welcome to Positive Rate. We're doing a Thursday evening stream in here, right here in Scotland. We're starting from Scotland as well. Hope you're all doing well today. Um, <laughs> might have a bit of competition on the, the old YouTube waves there, but never mind. Hope you're all doing fine. We've got uh, ATR flight for you today, and we are departing from my home airport, which is Edinburgh International on our way to Bergen in Norway. Now this is a, um, Bergen is on the uh, the west coast of Norway, so it's literally a hop over the uh, channel, or sorry, the North Sea, and then coming down into uh, Norway um, and into Bergen, basically. So it's, it's some, I, I couldn't tell you much more about it. I've never been there. I don't know much about Norway in person. Uh, but we will give a big shout out to Nighthawk. How you doing, Nighthawk? Um, glad you could join us today. And uh, of course, we've got these. Still have this issue with uh, the positive rate livery showing up as pink on other airplanes. But uh, yeah, we're flying the ATR uh, 72 today. I think um, I think Nighthawk's in the 42. Um, and we're gonna be fighting winds. It's it's actually looking a heck of a lot clearer than it was earlier today. So I don't know what. Um, what the weather's gonna be like, uh, but I, I did a, a bit of a test flight the other day, and it was, it was just cloud. Couldn't see a thing. So, but we've got some news articles that we're gonna share with you today as well. Uh, do make yourself known in the chat if you're watching. Say hello, and don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps us out and just keeps us uh, keeps us ticking over. Very busy today at Edinburgh Airport, anyway. <laughs> so uh, glad you could make it today. Um, right. We've got, uh, we've got a long block time, so I'm going to get things going. I've got the flight plan loaded in. Ah, right. Well, where are we going today, Willie? That's a very good question, isn't it? All right. Shall we talk through the flight plan? Shall we talk through the flight plan? Okay, so. Our flight plan today uh, takes us uh, runway 24 out of Edinburgh due to prevailing winds uh, coming out of 210 approximately, last time I checked. Uh, so it'll be too far. It is the Grace 3C departure, which will take us straight out and we'll loop around uh, through a series of waypoints holding at 6,000 until we get to Grice and then uh, taking a north easterly direction over the channel. So we'll, we'll actually get a, a good look at um, uh, the highlands actually as we come out of Scotland because we, we actually cross quite far north into Scotland, uh, probably around the, uh, the Aberdeen area, I think. Um, as we cut over into the Modney, now this is going to be the Modney, um, well I think there's only one departure for it anyway, but it's the Modney 2N arrival, or Modney, 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 whatever, uh, which kind of does a little thing, a funny thing here, so it kind of takes us almost on a bit of a DME arc around Bergen, um, and then we come on a, uh, uh, an offset direct approach before we cut in. I, I suspect this is probably for noise abatement or something like that. Um, but uh, just to give you a closer look, so you know, that's what, kind of what it looks like. We'll be coming in from uh, down here, Modney, uh, and then up and around and down to Nepal, and then ILS approach into runway 17, uh, hitting platform altitude at 3000 and uh, coming in straight into Bergen. Now, Bergen, be careful. If you're flying today, There's a, it's a bit of a bump. And I was doing a test flight the other day, and I hit hit rather hard, actually. <laughs> so I'm hoping to try and improve on my uh, uh, feet per minute of, I think it was about minus 320. It was, it was a thumper. Uh, so I'm hoping to improve on that today, but we'll, uh, we'll find out and see how things go. Um, right. Uh, so we shall get things going. So I figured out hotel mode, finally. Uh, so we'll see if we can get that working properly. Uh, let me know if the music's too quick there. Yeah, I think everything's looking good. Okay, so we're going to put the beacon on. We will uh, fasten the seatbelts just to alert the, uh, the cabin there. And uh, I think our... Close that door. There we go. Uh, just check the, the parking brakes around the R so we can take those wheel chucks off. And before we get rid of the ground power, uh, we're going to put our engines into feather, I think they are. Yes, okay. 
And we got get some interesting music today, so I was looking for something of kind of Scandinavian folky. It might almost sounds a bit Scottish, but a little bit different. So yeah, hopefully you're enjoying the tunes today. Uh, right, so we're going to start engine two first. And uh, before we do that, we want to put the prop brake on. So what we're going to do, give a few taps in the old hydraulic pump there, and we should hopefully uh, get a light, if I remember this, how to work this properly. Um, Nighthawk says, oh, able to join you today. Yes, perfect, Nighthawk. I'm glad you, uh, glad you are. Glad you are. Uh, okay, prop brake's not coming on. Uh, that is because we were supposed to be... Okay, I'll tell you why. If you can't get the prop brake on, the prop brake will not engage unless this is actually set to feather. So, there we go. Down the feather. Now, if we go look up at that prop brake, we should see it's ready to go. Yeah, there you go. So, I'll try and engage that again. Actually, let's do this in order. So, it says ready. Give it a few pumps on the hydraulic. Turn it on. And I think we can assume that that's ready to go. So we can start engine two. And if I look out the side, I shouldn't see that move. It should just be locked in position. Uh, no, no, it says, remind me who made this aircraft again. I, I'm not entirely sure. Tyler Schler, no, uh, maybe some, someone can, you can look that up. That'll be your test for today. So, yeah, no engine spinning, but you can clearly see that we've got. Actually, it's quite loud outside. You can clearly see that we've got an engine spooling up, and uh, it should mean, in theory, um, there we go. As that comes to life, Oop. and just quick check, see it's not spinning, definitely not spinning. So this is now hotel mode, but it is generating power for the airplane. And as it does so, um, hopefully, why these things should uh, come to life for us. Okay, so that does look like it's good. So what we're going to do now is turn off the ground power. And we still got power to the plane. So if um, if hotel no mode wasn't running, well, those those outer screens would turn off, and you know that you've not done it properly. But we have. We can get rid of the ground power. Everything's good there, and we shall push back. And we're just going to hold it in ground power for now, for the safety of the uh, the marshals. Uh, Notebook says, sorry, I should have been more specific. I mean, who made it for Microsoft Flight Simulator? I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, that, that, that's the issue. I, I think someone need to look it up. Uh, Nighthawk says, um, aerospatial SP owned by Airbus now. All right. Okay. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, I knew it was kind of an Airbus derivative, uh, the ATR. Oh, looks like we've got an intruder. <laughs> so eventually, once he figures himself out, turn on the parking brakes. We'll just assume that he's going to hook up. There we go. Just take a look outside us, make sure we're not going to hit anybody. And we can see Nighthawk is uh, already in position. probably can do at this point is uh, start and take the engine lock off of the first engine or engine two. Uh, so we do that by giving a few more presses on the hydraulic pump again and taking that off. Should see the unlock light come on and if we quickly switch over to our engine view we'll see that that's starting to spin now. Cool. So that's one thing cracked. Caused many, many uh, confusing moments for myself for a long time. Uh, ATR means Avion de Transport Regional. Oh, okay, very cool. OK, 
Okay, I think that is fine, my friend. You may stop the airplane and go away. Fully stop, brakes are on. As he starts moving away, which should hopefully be any minute. Go away. What's going on? Why is this guy not leaving? Oh, here he goes. Bit of a glitch there. Okay, and with him departing, we can start engine two. And we'll start seeing that spin. See, uh, actually, the delivery looks perfect if you're close up. That's the thing. So he doesn't look picked there. So, yes, it is a positive rate delivery. <laughs> Okay, good start on engine one. Once that is stable, we will now take the engines into auto. There we go. Turn that off. Everything's slowly coming into play now. Turn all this stuff on. Uh, taxi light. Just do a quick control surface check. Okay. And we can turn on our transponder uh, right here. TCAS is automatic, so we don't have to worry anything about that, which is a very convenient feature of the ATR. And we can take off our best lock performance, and we'll start moving forward. And Siobhan Verma says, hi. Hi Siobhan, how are you doing? Nice to have you along. Please uh, please do like and subscribe. Great to have you here, mate. Yeah, as I was saying, there's a lot of people buzzing around. It's a very busy airport tonight. Now, it doesn't like having the engine at throttle because it cuts out your hydraulics. And the, if you cut out the hydraulics, this is another thing discovered by the ATR, RTR, you lose your brakes. <laughs> so what we do is we keep the uh, throttles just um, just above idle, and we use our brakes to control our speeds as we're going around tight turns. And actually, when I think about this, this is very reminiscent of what um, what I've recall having flown as a passenger on turboprops um, in real life from Edinburgh to uh, London City actually okay so we can probably set our flaps we'll take a flaps uh, V rotation speed I think is about 109 knots um, a little bit too quick there, so we'll just slow the airplane down just a little bit. And we can see we've got our flaps set. Pitch is set as well. I think that should be 1.1 up. There we go. As we bid farewell to Edinburgh and Scotland. See, we've got a 15 knot uh, wind, uh, so that's going to give us a bit of pull. <laughs> Are taxing and taking off? Yeah, it does want it. It seems like it wants to just jump, doesn't it? Okay. We got a two hour block time in. <laughs> Uh, 
And we'll definitely have to look both directions before we cross in the runway T4, but we'll get, uh, get everything set up first. And I'll tell you one thing I probably did forget was to set the, uh, the altitude in the autopilot, so let's do that now. are on. I can drop that to idle for a sec. Um, so the altitude, no, I have said that, 6,000, that's fine. Okay, all good. Final checks. Uh, heading is set to uh, runway heading, I believe. Yes, it is, so that's fine. Uh, and there you go, you can see the hydraulics are kicking out from flat aisle. So if it does that while you're moving, you can't stop, you can't brake. There's no hydraulic pressure on the brake, so you got to be careful with that. Um, flight director is armed and I think we've got initial uh, set speed at 140 but we'll probably use VNAV at some point for that. I think we're good to go so let's get the landing lights on, strobe on, we'll just take a quick quick peek around, around to make sure nobody's coming in. Well, all clear. And Nighthawk's right behind me ready to go so let's uh, Reversing engines will stop you pretty fast. Yeah, well, yeah, definitely. It's uh, it's not exactly subtle to reverse engines on this airplane. <laughs> but yeah, the weather has definitely certainly improved from what it was earlier, so that's good. Okay. 50% power. Ramp. B knots. Hit that 110 mark. There we go. Slowly lift off. And we're clear. As a rig, you're up. Let's kick the tires and light the That's fires, it. Big Daddy. Yes, indeed. Do you play with the memes? <laughs> Uh, exclamation mark memes in the chat will show you all the different things you can do. Okay. Bring that back to notch. And walk, the, walk our pitch there. I don't know why this is uh, kicked off, so let's get this back to our map. There we go. Uh, currently on wing level heading select, so we can bring in the heading now. And I think what we want to do is hold that indicated airspeed uh, to give us our altitude, so... That'll hold us around 150 or so. Should give us a, a healthy... ...takeoff. Uh, and what we're going to do, so there's a bit of funniness here, if I uh, back out, so what we're going to do is just go uh, straight to, um, it's TLA-32. We'll put that in. There we go, and let's go to NAV. The airplane will begin to turn to correct for that. Flaps up. Lane lights can come off. Or taxi lights, I should say. We might get a good view of the bridges here, actually. There you go. Look at that. There's the three bridges. So we got the old, uh, the old road bridge, uh, the old from oldest to newest. So you've got the uh, fourth rail bridge, which is built uh, 1800s. Um, 
It's actually quite an amazing thing to see. You got the uh, the original road bridge, and uh, you've now got the new road bridge. All three converge into North Queens Ferry, and there's a hotel right at the foot of that, which is a really cool place to uh, to, uh, to stay. Um, looking behind us, do we see Nighthawk anywhere? That's a good question. Oh, there he is. There he is. He's probably flying the full. He's probably flying the full departure. <laughs> Okay, coming into our initial transition of 6,000. We're going to have to hold it here. Technically, we should have gone to about 4,000, but that's okay. We'll just bypass it. And I think just to save time, we're going to, because uh, we kind of do one of funny turns here, so I'm just going to go direct to Grice. Um, so actually, what we want to do is Grice, execute. Which kind of cuts out all that funny turns and everything like that. I'll just have to take us straight along. Leveling off at 6,000 feet, uh, we can go to standard uh, altitude, our standard barrel, and we can go do climb power. And the airplane will begin to climb. So we want to, um, we can use V-speed, but initially our target climb rate is about 170 knots. It's going to give you the best balance with performance in climb. Let's watch everyone around us as they float in and out of Edinburgh. There you go. And Sids has dropped in. He says, what's up, Willie? How you doing? I'm doing well, Sids. How are you, mate? Hit the like for me, Sids. Hit the like for me, mate. I see this all the time in real life. It's a, it's a great part of the world, I must admit. We're now crossing into um, Kingdom of Fife, which is a, a, count, a county in, in Scotland. Uh, and just a quick reminder, so we will be uh, flying over the highlands today. Here we are, we're just uh, completing our Grace departure and then we'll start turning out to the, the northeast as we cross over um, northern Scotland. And we should see Aberdeen at some point around here. Uh, do I have the Orbix EU Great Britain North? I believe, I believe so. I believe so, Dan. Yeah. He did that yesterday, Sid. It's well done, mate. So you got to play with our memes, Sids. Nobody wants to try the memes. Eh? <laughs> There's a few of them there. Once you get things working, I'll tell you what, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah, I do like that one. I should, I, I keep debating whether I should get a, uh, a gif of... Um, um, because it's not, what's his name? It's not Boomer, what's his name? Uh, I don't even remember what the character's name is now. Uh, don't look, says, was just looking at it, thought it would be a nice addition for this flight, seeing as we're in the ATR. Yeah, of course, absolutely. Some beautiful scenery out there. And it doesn't take long before you start getting into the hills and the train, you know. We are beginning our procedure turn, so I'm just going to monitor the aircraft. Uh, Grace is our last constraint, so once we get past Grace onto Noko, which it has done, we can start our uh, climb to 19,000. Go, 19,000 set. See if the VNAV wants to play ball here. Let's give it a go. 
Uh, of course, we set that to auto. But what it should do is it's going to pitch to slow the airplane down and bring that to about 170, and once it levels off, uh, then the climb rate will start to, uh, to drop a little bit. Uh, Sid says, I'm going to go get some sleep. It's already 12 in India. Yeah, it will be. Yeah, absolutely. Um, dealing with my half-yearly exams. Oh, brutal. Right, get some sleep. Get some sleep. Make, rest your brain. And uh, best best wishes for uh, for your exams, mate. Hope it goes well. Take care. Great. Thank you for stopping along, Sid. Appreciate it. Okay. So we should roughly hit our cruising altitude before we actually leave the coast of Scotland, which will be kind of good. Should give us a nice open wide view of uh, of the Highlands in Aberdeen, Aberdeenshire specifically. And put Snoopy in the doghouse, so we click on that heading just to bring it to the current, just in case something goes wrong, your heading selects always facing your nose. So I'm enjoying the music today. It's almost like a kind of Celtic Scandinavian vibe. It's uh, very suitable for this region. Okay, now we're just checking. At the moment, the plane's going to be pretty much behaving itself, but as we get up around 15,000, I've learned you have to keep your eye on the plane. Um, you really need to keep an eye on it because so sometimes you get uh, an icing angle of attack which can increase your stall speed. So you, you need to be careful that if you're looking on here you can see that little square box. It, basically if the plane starts dropping into this you're going to get a speed warning and that's putting you at risk of stalling the aircraft so you want to stay out of that. Um, and at the moment it's, it's quite low so we don't have to worry about it but as we start to gain altitude and the lift on the airplane becomes less effective, uh, you'll start to see that that stall bar increase, and that's where you have to be very, very careful. As, pretty much as you get above 15,000, making that final uh, climb up to 19,000, that's where you got to be really attentive. And it's worse if, uh, if there's lots of cloud and icing. It sounds a bit like Celtic? Yeah, it does. Okay, we're still on cl climb power management. Uh, Sid says, thanks man, uh, thanks Willie for positive vibes. Until next time, see ya. See ya Sids, all the best. Nighthawk says, I'm pretty much right below, you're below me, are ya? Let's have a look. Let's see if I can see ya. Oh, there you are. How sneaky is that? <laughs> There he is, there's Nighthawk. Of 10,000. Release the passengers. Uh, Nighthawk says, geez, an air airliner just blew past you head on, did he? Oh, I never even noticed that. Didn't even get a TCAS warning. It's probably just as well. <laughs> uh, right, what am I forgetting here? I think everything's looking okay so far. It's always good just to have a quick look around, though, and make sure you're not thinking of forgetting anything. But I think, I think we're okay. Yeah. Not much to worry about, so we'll just check the, uh, see if the, um, weather conditions in Bergen are 18005, so let's go, let's go put that into our, 
that's not correct. I think I put in uh, Edinburgh's. Slash oh. level five. And transition altitude, I would say, is 6,000. Q and H is ten fifteen. Which gives us a uh, approach speed of about 110 knots, which is pretty typical. Uh, it doesn't really it's not something that really changes much on the on the ATR. Does the TCAS work on the ATR? Yes. Uh, I don't know if it makes much noise, but I did definitely notice uh, on a flight earlier this week that you I was getting a TCAS notification uh, and it was giving me a, a you know an indication but it, it didn't give me anything in terms of an alarm so I don't know <coughs> if that works or not one thing I did know that works though is the weather uh, although there's not much to speak of right now so see a little speck on there but that's okay we, we want to keep it that way it's it's nice to be able to see things as we cross into the highlands okay now let's check our altitude because are we getting to that critical 15,000 yes we are now and see that that, that stall are starting to slowly inch up. And again, as I say, once you get about 15,000, that's when you have to kind of start paying enough attention. Once we get up the cruise altitude, uh, everything will be fine. We can just uh, shoot the breeze, as we see in Canada. Sleepy in the doghouse, so I'm just aligning the heading to my nose again. Does the ATR have any stall protection like the Airbus? Yes, it does. Um, what what the plane generally does, you know, it can't control the power setting. Obviously, that's up to you. Um, but if if it's struggling to climb and it, it thinks it's going to stall, you get a speed warning. Uh, and generally, if the speed warning kicks in, if you're in a, a, a climb at that point, the, the plane will level itself off. Uh, but that is assuming that you have enough power applied that it can it can stay level. Um, if you don't, the plane will continue to, to lose speed and eventually it'll stall out. So it, whereas the Airbus will actually throw out the engines, there is no FADEC on the ATR. So you need to respond to the alarms, but the plane will try, it will definitely try to save itself. Yeah. Which is handy, because it's happened to me a few times. <laughs> Uh, no, it says, speaking of weather, Navigraph Charts now has weather ov overlays. Yes, yes, we're going to, uh, actually, that's right, that's not in the news, isn't it? That's just a, a new thing. Um, I'll tell you what, let's, let's get up to cruise altitude first, Dan, and, uh, once we do that, we can, we can start, uh, talking about everything. Uh, just waiting on our final turn here. Uh, we're not far away from 19,000. Now, you can see the VNAV is managing this very tightly. We're still at 170. Uh, but the, the climb performance is, is steadily dropping down to a trickle. And this is very true uh, for turbo props. If you're flying domestically and regional, um, you will tend to find that it just seems to take forever to get up to, up to altitude. But we're still climbing and we're still above our, our stall warning, which is good. Final turn as we head towards the coast. Hard to see because of the clouds, but the highlands is kind of will be off in that direction. And uh, once we get close to uh, Aberdeen, I'll, just, I'll go from the air and see if we can see the city. So hope everybody is doing well. Um, I can notice the, the weather is definitely starting to turn a bit colder. Uh, don't know what how it is in in Ireland. Uh, uh, Dan, but I've, I've certainly noticed up here we're starting to see more rain. We're starting to see those temperatures drop at night now. Okay, 
everything's still looking good. No icing to worry about as well today, which is good. So that will give us good performance. And um, once we get on course, the winds are going to give us a right good boost. So we should be able to see a ground speed of around anywhere up to 310, 320 knots, which is going to be really useful. Uh, Nighthawk says, we have a summer heat wave in Ontario. I've heard that, actually. Yeah, I heard that. Which, it must be bittersweet. I mean, I know a lot of people like the warm weather. Personally, getting warm weather in October, especially around Thanksgiving, just really annoys me. I don't, it doesn't feel like Thanksgiving when it's, uh, when it's too hot. Um, Notelik says, it's starting to feel chilly at night, certainly, yeah. Yeah, weather's on and off. Nasty black clouds today, but warm and wet. Yep, same here. I think it was pretty much all the UK. I did a practice flight down to London City today and I couldn't see anything uh, until I got up south of Birmingham. And then suddenly you get to London and it's all 25 degrees and clear and yeah. London. <laughs> okay, slowly climbing through 17,000 just about. Let's see if I can spot right off. You really get a good view of the, the mountains off in the distance there. Okay. Okay. Beautiful northern Scotland. Can't beat it. And Stu says, uh, Hi, sorry, not uh, not now you were. Hi, hail, sorry, not now you was flying. Didn't know you, I was flying. Hi, hi, Willie. Hello. Hello, Stu. Very complicated one to decipher that. How are you, Stu? Hope you're doing well. Uh, hit the like button for me, Stu. <laughs> While you're here. While you're here. Whoa, Stu. Um, Stu, check these out. I want pick pick one out of the hat and give it a go, Stu. Let me know what you think. Your opinion counts to me. Pick any one you like. Dan, that's another thing. Um, there should be a way. I have to figure out how how to do it, but there should be a way to be able to get live Metar information in in the chat. I'm gonna look into it uh, after uh, sometime next week. Um, but that is one of the things I'm determined to do. I'll see if I can get uh, Metar, so we can actually request Metar in the chat. Oh, here we go. Oh, you don't need the comma. Uh, don't put the comma on the end, Stu. It might work anyway. No, t try it again without the comma. You should be all right. Uh... So I'll just check and see if that command is... This <laughs> dude, it's getting worse. <laughs> it's getting worse. Exclamation mark, red button. No comma on the end. No comma on the end. So, exclamation mark, red button. But you're putting a comma on the end. Get rid of that. <laughs> try or try a shorter one. <laughs> Maybe I should take those commas out. Just put in hyphens or something instead. Because what I haven't checked uh, is we've not we've not seen if someone who's a non-moderator can use it. Nighthawk, Nighthawk, could you could you throw in a meme for us, just to see if they're working? Oh, there's a little bit of weather showing up on the radar. That's cool. And it looks like we've made a. Uh, pretty much a clean climb to 19,000, so that's perfect. <laughs> Stu. <laughs> Exclamation mark, red button. <laughs> Are you trying to do this on your phone? Okay, Stu in a doghouse there. And 
as we level off, we will put our power management into cruise mode, and we should see the plane start to pick up speed. There you go! Thank you, Dino. <laughs> Poor Stu. There you go, 19,000. Cru cruise power management. Just saves a little bit of uh, engine performance there, so we don't cook them. And uh, that's it. It's time, just the time to cruise now. Oh, we're going to see if we can see Aberdeen, didn't we? Wow. <laughs> There's Aberdeen. That's the city of Aberdeen down there, folks. Or the Granite City, as they call it. They say goodbye to Scotland. Nighthawk's uh, got a jump on us. He's holding in 19,000 as well. Big port city, uh, Aberdeen, and um, main industry in Aberdeen is oil research and uh, drilling. So you will see a lot of uh, a lot of offices based there. There's a surprising number of uh, direct flights to Aberdeen to different parts of the UK as well, and and parts of Europe. So it wouldn't surprise me if you can fly direct from Aberdeen to say uh, Oslo or Amsterdam. Where Will and Kate went to university? No, they went to uh, St. Andrews, Nighthawk. They, uh, they were down the coast. Uh, in fact, I don't think that, I think that might be Stonehaven. <coughs> uh, actually, that could be St. Andrews down there, but yeah, they're, they're around here somewhere. Further down. You need, you're missing the exclamation mark on the front, uh, Steve. There you go. There's an airport down there somewhere as well. Possibly it might be that one there. There you go, that's it, Steve. Uh, Notelook says, I think my nan was born and bred in Dundee. Okay, very good. Uh, same with my mom, but raised in Essex, I think, yeah. Uh, so I suppose I had a bit of Gaelic, Gaelic blood uh, in me somewhere. Uh, that's my favorite one night, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's my favorite one. Got to have a little bit of Captain Kirk in there somewhere. That's if if I if I mess up somewhere. That's that's when Con can be used. Oh, and off we go. Only another. Uh, Hour and 15 minutes or so. <laughs> uh, am I getting the TBM 830? Is it the 830 or the 850? I can't remember. Is, but this is, is this the new one, the uh, Black Square? Um, I, I am interested in it. Um, I have been flying the, the TBM 930 quite a lot uh, because uh, the working title has done so many updates to it. It is a beautiful airplane to fly. But the eight, I like the 850 is a bit different because it's a lot more manual. It's got a bit of a steam cockpit to it. So yeah, I'm, I'm definitely interested. Uh, and I'm sure Blackhawk's done a uh, Black Square. Is it Blackhawk? Black Square has done a brilliant job on it as well. No, like I said, I'd love to visit Scotland though, just not sure where. Uh, Highlands are definitely on my list. Highlands are nice. Um, I think for a first time visitor to Scotland, uh, you, you definitely want to check out Edinburgh. Uh, but I would only spend a day in Edinburgh. Um, other destinations, St. Andrews, uh, Stirling. Um, even though we just flew over it, I'd probably give Aberdeen a miss. <laughs> uh, Loch Ness is obviously a good one, and uh, Inverness is uh, interesting as well. 
an Aviemore, which is it's more for if you're into cycling and skiing, but uh, Aviemore is quite quite pretty. It's right in the middle of the highlands. Uh, just a day in Edinburgh? Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't I wouldn't spend much more time than that. Um, it's it's one of these places you. I mean, it depends what you do. If, it, I, I suppose if you if you're going to go to a, a performance at the Playhouse or the Festival Theatre, then you can probably justify staying for two days. But if you're not doing anything like that, you're just walking around touring Edinburgh. Yeah, I'd probably just I'd say a day is probably sufficient. Some people take two. Uh, shall he join the search for Nessie? Yeah, uh, yeah, they're doing that just now, aren't they? Okay, guys, I'm just going to step away uh, for a second. I'll be right back. I'll leave you with these beautiful views and see you in a minute. Okay, back with you guys. Um, so Nighthawk had some good suggestions. Scotland, Iona? Yeah, Oban. Oban is great, actually. I really do like Oban. West, anywhere on the West Coast, like Fort George, is pretty good, too. Uh, Loch Ness, obviously, yeah. Um, museums in Scotland are pretty good, yeah. Yeah, they are. Um, I think Ed Edinburgh Castle, most people find it a letdown. Uh, but Stirling Castle is remarkable. The best attraction in Edinburgh is a place you'd almost miss it if you if you don't know how to find it. But it's on the Royal Mall. It's called uh, uh, Queen. Was it Mary Mary King's Close? I think. Um, I'll, I'll try and find a link to it. And I'll put it up. But it's it's actually it's a, a, an old street that's been buried under the buildings in the Royal Mile, and it's still been preserved as it was back in the 17, 1600s. That's remarkable, and it's also rumored to be haunted as well. Um, you also, you'll get people punting to try and get you to go to the vaults. That's that's just a scam. That's, it's just, a, they, they say it's all haunted and people have, you know, that's a bit of a scam, I think, but the, as Mary King's Close is definitely, definitely worth looking. Um, in Glasgow, You've got two museums, but the, the biggest, the, probably the most interesting one in Glasgow would be the uh, the Scottish Transport Museum, I think, or Museum of Transport or something like that. Um, and then, of course, if you're willing to go out with Edinburgh to uh, East Lothian, so east east of Edinburgh, 
if you get your way to East Fortune Air Museum, they've got the Concorde there and they've got a, a fantastic display of static air, aircraft uh, that you can walk around and see, including the, uh, the original um, to have one Comet airliner, the first ever jet airliner operation, which is pretty cool. So, see, Nighthawk's making really good time. He'll be, uh, he'll be in Bergen far ahead of me. Bit of weather starting to pick up on the radar. No icing warnings, though. I think at, at the moment we're sitting above the clouds, but we'll keep an eye on that. And uh, with the crosswind, bit of a tailwind, 314 knots ground speed. That's all right. We'll take that. An old World War II runway. Yeah, it was too. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely spot on. I can't remember if it was Lancaster bombers that used to fly from that or if it was uh, Hurricanes. I think it might have been Lancaster bombers, actually. Or possibly bombers of some description. Um, Nighthawk's been to the Transport Museum. Yeah, funny enough, I've not been there. But if everyone tells me, it's really, really good. It's definitely worth checking out. That's what I've heard. 33 minutes of flight time so far. If we go to our... That saying, uh, of course, the current flight time in the sim, I think, is set to 1100, so that's 01... One twenty-three Zulu. What time is it now? That can't be right. Hour, I think it's just an hour twenty-three minutes, possible. Or no, that's the leg. That's the next leg. Sorry. <laughs> that's not, doing, not reading this properly at all. Um, Twelve oh nine Zulu, according to the sim. So that is a little over an hour and ten minutes, guys. So we're more or less on track on time today. It's not much to see in Bergen, but we do have some free scenery, so we'll take a tour of that when we get there. But for the time being, we'll just uh, keep enjoying ourselves. As long as those clouds stay below us, that's the key thing. Try a meme here. So we also have uh, sounds. Oop, not one. Um, so currently there's only two, which is our audio memes. Um, but you guys can suggest anything you want. If it's something funny, what the best way to do it is to uh, send me a, a YouTube link or a link of some sort in uh, positive rate discussions. Tag me, tag Willie Canuck. Uh, and I'll, I'll add them to the uh, to the auto mix. So if you have any ideas for funny audio uh, memes, uh, just let me know. And for the uh, the visual ones as well. Uh, we've got a couple funny ones in there, but um, I'm sure we can add more. Uh -oh. uh, Stu says, see you, bye. Uh, see you next time. Let's do all the best to you. Take care, mate. Great to see you, mate. Definitely see the weather starting to build on the radar now. So this is cool. So the weather's working in the ATR. I'm, I'm wondering, does anybody know if it's working in the fly-by-wire? So I couldn't seem to get that going at, uh, when I lost fluid, but maybe I've missed an update. And I don't know if something has changed with uh, the new sim update as well. That could be possibly why. Nighthawk says, how do you turn on the weather? Okay, so what you want to do, go down to your center panel, and you'll see a, a little dial here. It's hard to see with the uh, lighting. Let me see if I can turn on that. I don't know if that's going to help. No, probably not. Um, so you'll see a little dial here, and what you want to do is switch that to WX. So turn it off, turn it on. There you go. So it's below the TGT button. Don't want to hit that, but there's a little dial there. If you put that to WX, 
should see uh, should see it light up. Um, weather radar not yet. I don't think it will for uh, this Microsoft Flight Center. Well, uh, feast your eyes, mate. It's working in the ATR. You got it. Cool. It's working very well, actually. And it seems to be relatively, relatively accurate because it's saying it's pretty much a pass off to the starboard, which is correct. And building heavier on the uh, port side, which it is. Not for the fly by wire. Oh, right. Sorry. I misunderstood. Um, well, you never know. I mean, I'm sure I'll appear at some point. Yeah, there is, and Nighthawk confirms there's no weather for the fly-by-wire right now. Yeah. Well, hopefully they can crack it. Hopefully they can. It's a, it's a big miss. You see those clouds are getting closer to us. <laughs> what I'm watching for, we, we will get an AOA um, icing warning up here. That That's when we really have to pay attention to uh, the stall bar. At the moment, uh, we're, we're well ahead of it, and we're making good speed, so that's fine. Just look at the fluffy clouds out there, though. While oh, we're here, I'll do a weather check. 10.15. Winds are 180. What did we put into the performance plan? No, nope, that's still the same. Okay. That's good. Yeah, we have a top of the descent marker as well. That's good. Uh, note looks says, tell you what will be an interesting comparison. Compare it to the weather radar on Navigraph charts. Hmm. Let me see. get that weather on the uh, is it layers? Can't remember how to turn the weather on. It's night mode. Which one's weather? I don't know. Does anybody know which what I'm supposed to hit? Above weather. Above weather. I don't understand. <laughs> no idea what you mean. Is it is is it on here somewhere? That's the question. Let's see if I can just do this full screen first. Under the rooting to the top of telemetry. Oh, okay, thank you. All right. What do you think? Are you convinced? I think it's close, close approximation. Mind you, where are we? We're up here. Sorry, I'm looking in the wrong plate part of the map. Uh, so that's kind of what it looks like right now. It's kind of similar. Not too far off, yeah. Um. We still have sim brief open. They have satellite weather on the map. Um, blah, 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 blah. 
I do. I'll tell you the other thing we could look at, which is even better. Let's try Windy. So I don't know if that's going to give us cloud. It should do. Clouds. Let's get our bearings. So based on that, we're probably around... there somewhere there you go <laughs> all the all the weather you can handle <laughs> okay there you go anyway um, back to the airplane that was cool that was fun I enjoyed that all right should we talk about some of the news then that's the other thing while we're up here everything's happy Okay, so far, that's good. So, news, 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 news. Uh, a couple interesting things. So, the first, um, this is a uh, Latin VFR Airbus mod now has Navigra Navigraph charts integration, which is really cool. Seems like there's a lot of studios taking advantage of this. Um, they have developed, uh, obviously, all the Latin VFR have done the variants from the 319 to 321 for Microsoft Flight Center. I think, I can't remember if this modifies on the fly-by-wire or if this modifies on the the actual A320 in the center. I think it might be fly-by-wire. Uh, anyway, you can now integrate, um, now integrate Navigraph charts, and it looks like there's also uh, inclusion for SimBrief import, which is always handy. Um, and they've made some enhancements to the LNAV and VNAV logic, so it's really good. So it, we, we seem to be spoiled for choice when it comes to the Airbus 320 series. Uh, a lot of different places you can get it. Um, and there's uh, an example of the Navigraph working in the, in the sim. Uh, other thing that is, now, if you are a VAT simmer, and you like participating across the pond, you have a due deadline. Right now they are saying you need to um, apply to get in to cross the pond for your slot for the, by the 11th of October. So that is uh, less than six days away. So you need to get that in soon. Um, they do say they will give slots out by priority. So people who have been more active in the cross the pond series will get precedence. But um, if you, uh, what they do suggest is, you know, if you get a slot, don't not show up because if you don't show up, that actually works against you. That it'll mark you down if you want to join. Uh, in the next cross the pond and that is going to happen on October 28th and it's eastbound this year so they, they will be departing from uh, North America all points in North America to points in Europe uh, so go, go check it out it's great fun uh, it really uh, put some uh, it's it's like a stress test for the VATSIM servers that's what I think um, Nolik says I've not done in VATSIM but I wouldn't mind trying uh, cross the pond offline yeah absolutely well I mean in a way, you probably can. You can participate and still see everyone on uh, Volanta. So you, you, it would feel like you're, you're you know, doing it. <laughs> um, and the final thing is... Now, this is an interesting one. So VATSIM has now adopted 8.33 kilohertz frequency changes. Now, what this means, it, it, it drops the, um, the increments that you can use on your com traffic. Now, why is this important? The reason is, uh, a lot of places in Europe, which I didn't realize, there there's an increasing number of air traffic control uh, controllers who are trying to compete for frequencies, and they were finding that it, by blocking it out to 25 kilohertz, it just wasn't giving them enough channels uh, for all the various ATC, ATC officers to be able to, uh, to communicate. Um, so what this does is VATSIM has brought, brought this in to now bring this in line with what's happening in uh, real life, which is really cool. 
uh, on the name of accuracy. So, uh, big thank you, big thanks to uh, Notelix for uh, putting this together for us today. And that is our news for today, folks. Uh, Notelix says, I remember Nick saying it's possible to do it in the A318. So that would give more reason to that Horizon mod with it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. You know what clouds mean? We've got cold temperatures here. So as a precautionary measure, I'm going to turn on the icing, guys. And just as I did that, Icing AOA, AOA uh, alert has now come on. So what we're going to do is keep our eye on that uh, that speed tape to see if the stall bar comes up. And we're now in the soup. <laughs> that was it. Well, I hope you enjoyed the flight. There's nothing else to see. <laughs> At least not, not for the foreseeable moment. But I think based on the radar, now this is a really good test of the radar. So by rights, it's saying, yes, you are in, in some mud, uh, albeit water vapor based. Uh, so once we get to the edge of that, we should see this clear up. And if that's the case, regardless of what uh, VATSIM or, or uh, SimBrief might say, Obviously, Microsoft is going to interpret the weather the best it can, so you have to go by the weather in the sim before anything else, because that's the sim is ultimately telling you, this is what I know the weather to be. Um, but what'll be really cool, and I'll just zoom in one notch, once we get to the end of this, we should see that clear up. And we've got a master warning, and the master warning is icing. So luckily, we were well ahead of it. We had the icing on already. Uh, and you will start to see ice build up. And one of the things I noticed on the ATR is you start to see ice building up on uh, the, the little sensor over there. Which is really cool. So yeah, I'm more and more I'm, I'm starting to get comfortable and really enjoy the ATR. Now, trick, see if anyone's paying attention attention. What's wrong with this picture at the moment? What have I not set? Which could co uh, cause me some problems if the autopilot fails. See if anyone can get it. Anybody have any ideas? While, while you're uh, thinking about that, um, as I mentioned, we've got icing. Look at this now. So the, the stall tape, or the speed warning tape, is increasing now because the performance of... Basically, the airplane is struggling uh, to generate as much lift as it usually is because of the water vapor around it. So the, the AT, ATR is telling you, look, the, the type of error that you're flying through right now is not efficient. Uh, we've got two options. Obviously, right now we're, we're, we're quite happy, but if we were lower um, and we needed to increase speed in a hurry, the one thing we can do is we can switch this to maximum climb uh, or maximum performance, which is MCT. Uh, that will tell the engines to drive harder just to get us out of a, a sticky situation, but you don't want to leave it in that position for too long because you'll, you'll cook the engines. Um, oh, Calum says, late stream, yeah, hey, how you doing, Calum? So, Dan, you don't know, right, um, it's my heading bug. I haven't set my heading bug. So, the, the issue with that is, if my autopilot fails and it goes into heading select mode, or generally if the nav fails and it goes into heading select mode, it's going to turn the plane, so I need to fix that, and I do that just by clicking on the button there. And now I've got the heading in the, uh, in the nose position, which is sometimes referred by pilots uh, in North America as putting Snoopy in the doghouse. And that just means if the nav fails for any reason and the GPS fails, it goes to heading select mode, uh, the plane will continue to fly its present course. Okay, so 
Based on the weather radar, it says we should be popping out of it, so we're keeping an eye to see if that actually happens. I'm kind of enjoying this now. I'm, I'm really intrigued to see what's going to happen. And then, if it clears up as we get to the end, we definitely know that this weather radar is, is working as it should, which is really cool. So, Amy Callum, uh, thanks for, uh, glad you could join us, Amy. How are you? Hope you're doing all right. Um, your, uh, your impending move will be coming shortly, won't it? Or if, if you're not there already. Notelik says, oh, it's, so it's like uh, with the Boeing, you have to keep uh, on top of the heading bug. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Whereas the Airbus defaults to, so the, the Airbus doesn't introduce a heading bug unless you go into heading mode and then it all, always defaults to the nose. Airbus is, uh, I think it's the only airplane that does that. Um, possibly some of the more modern Boeings might do. I don't know. I couldn't speak for the 787. I don't have it. Um, but certainly, yeah, 737, you have to manually turn it, which is a bit of a pain. But one of the, thing, one of the things I do like about the ATR is you can just press it and it'll automatically default to the top. I think the CRJ does that too. And uh, likely the dash, uh, the, the dash, um, dash eight, <laughs> the Q400. Okay, so according to the radar, we're almost at the end. Let's see what happens. And Dark Fury's just jumped in. He says, "Evening, evening, Mr. Dark Fury. How are you today?" Uh, Callum says, glad to catch the stream. Pretty good. Moving Sunday. Ooh, leaving it right to the wire. So you, you must be starting a new job on Monday, is that right? <laughs> Mr. Fury has arrived. Uh, and Tony says, hey, it's 3 a.m. in the morning. Just so I'd say, hey, Tony, what the heck are you doing? Do you, do you actually sleep? <laughs> good to see you, Tony. Hope you're doing okay. Uh, Dark says, knackered from work. Hope you're all well. All right. Yeah. It's a late shift. That's a late shift. Go to bed, Tony says, no licks. <laughs> we need something like that. Go to bed, eh? I don't even know if I've got a suitable command. I've got a ha ha. Tony, what, what puts you up at this hour, mate? We're just we're just testing the theory to see if this weather radar actually tells us nonsense or the truth. At the moment, it looks like it might be telling us nonsense. Because according to this, we should be coming clear of the clouds and we're still in the soup. <laughs> Going back to sleep, says Tony. <laughs> Need, oh, you had to, yeah, it was to <laughs> oh, yeah. toilet run. Of course it was. <laughs> uh, Nighthawk says, I have ice on the left side, but not on the right. That's interesting. Wow. <laughs> Look at that. Just soup. Uh, I've got... I got bits of ice across, not a lot, but I do have the anti-ice on, so that's probably doing its job. Oh, but I can see rain now, so this could change in a hurry. It's just horrible weather right now over the North Sea. And I suspect any anyone flying domestically in the UK right now has not had a, a fantastic flight either. Uh, it's very, very high clouds. Um, lots of uh, sporadic rain and precipitation all over the place. Um, in the soup, fantastic, yeah. <laughs> we need a Lou review. <laughs> yeah, don't don't say that. Everybody will start sending, start putting pictures of their toilets in positive rate form. The server or something like that. So, 
actually trying to think. All of our commands, and the other thing you'll notice, guys, is we now have our, our new friendly positive rate bot who pretty much handles everything now. Uh, the only thing uh, that positive rate bot does not do is the subscription uh, alerts and the uh, tip, the donation alerts. Uh, but apart from that, it's all it's all positive rate bot. There's uh, all the commands that you can get, you can do for you. Your Christmas Prezi will, uh, Willy will be a positive rate toilet. <laughs> don't don't think Mrs. Canuck would be too pleased. I don't think she'd be too excited about that. One. And an elite Freemason clips. He says, "Good evening, all. Hello, elite. How are you? So glad you could join along. Hit the hit the like and subscribe, folks, if you haven't already. Hit those uh, get those likes up for us." Let every, everybody, and including YouTube, know that we're here and uh, enjoying ourselves. Well, trying to enjoy ourselves. There's not much to look at at the moment. <laughs> and if you're a passenger, that's it. Yeah, not much to look at. But we're definitely, uh, I think, past the halfway point, anyway. And there's, I mean, I could go outside the aircraft, but there's, I'm, I'm just can't see anything. <laughs> can't see a thing. 80 miles away from our top of descent. So yeah, I, I think it's probably debatable whether that weather radar actually means anything. I'm not sure. It looked pretty anyway. It got me excited, but it looks like uh, I think, um, for all intents and purposes, it doesn't look like it's doing anything useful. The airplane definitely knows that we're in a cloud, though, because we've got the icing on. Anyways, Elite Freemason Clips, how are you as well? I hope you're having a good evening. Um, Calm says, so the actual weather is accurate, but just not in the radar, correct? Yeah. More or less. More or less. But, so yes, if you're flying over the North Channel right now in an airplane, or the North Channel, the North Sea, in an airplane, this is... And you're at 19,000 feet, so unfortunately, because the ATR can't really go higher than that. That's the problem. If you were in a, uh, like a jet airliner, uh, the, the jet airliners go a lot higher, so they, they can get above all this. Uh, but the ATRs, 19,000 is, is the cutoff point for them. Um, so, unfortunately, we're just we're stuck. It's either, uh, prep, you know, just got to keep flying uh, and wait for it to clear up. But if I look at the uh, the weather in Bergen, um, it's scattered at three thousand and broken at twenty. Yeah, so broken at twenty one thousand feet. So we might we might see a break below it, but we should expect to see clouds above us to, by two thousand feet. Now, if you're in an airliner and you're flying at thirty anywhere between thirty three to thirty eight thousand feet, you're going to be well above that. So it's not gonna. It'd just be blue skies for those guys up there, but not for us. And there you go. That's exactly what I, I, I said was gonna happen, didn't I? So we might get a clearing where they um, we see clouds above us and clouds below us, and that's pretty much what's happening. How how long that persists, I don't know. Did I hear about AOG Technics Limited? No, I didn't. No, I didn't, Dark. Chuck in a link and we can check it out. We've still got a little bit of time before top of the sun. I do love it when there's weather though, because it really makes things interesting. It just looks so cool. I mean, look at that. When people take uh, screenshots, they should always do it in weather, not in clear skies. This is far more interesting. Far more interesting. Okay. 
definitely see the ice building up in the wings now. Now there is a... I, I, th I think you can kick the uh, the wing boot somehow, can you not? I'm not sure if there's a... Dark says, AOG Techniques Limited, based in London, is being investigated by regulators over claims that supplied fake parts for jet engines, powering many older Airbus 320 and Boeing 737 airplanes. Oh my god, what's the implication of that? Are you saying they've put, they've supplied fake parts to actual airliners and they've inst installed parts that aren't real? Is that what you're saying? Uh, Kelm says the ATR looks cool. Yeah, it is. It is pretty neat. Your donation never came. All right. Um, uh, Limbo Wolf is in. He says, evening. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Limbo Wolf. Hope, hope you're doing okay. Uh, two seconds. Dan, I'll just check to see if anything's actually come through. Yeah, I have received it, so I don't know what's happened there. Just a moment. It's a bit uh, concerning. Nighthawk says, according to the Daily Mail, American Airlines United and Southwest have ground aircraft due to fake parts. Oh my god. That's frightening. And why would anyone do that? Parts are needed to be verified of origin. If a part is found within falsified ARC, which has already been installed, it should be replaced with an improved part, yeah? It's, well, it's... It, it means a lot of these planes that ha if they find any planes that have it, are going to have to be completely recertified. Yikes. That is not good. Dan, I don't know what's happening with the donations, mate. Um, it's not even shown up. I can't even see it in my uh, my OBS uh, control panel. So I, it looks like stream, stream elements is not working for some reason. Sorry to say. Um, <laughs> Dan, did you and you definitely did it through the stream elements tip link, right? You didn't send it to me directly or something strange like that. Because according to Streamlabs, it hasn't appeared. because it had something switched off. So what I'll do, Dan, is I'll refund it and you can try again. How's that? Sorry, guys. Bear with me.
Here you go, I've kicked that back to you. Yeah, maybe if you could, if you wouldn't mind retrying that, then we'll just see if there's uh, if I've made a goof up somewhere. That's possibly why. Um, 126 engines across several airlines. Wow, unbelievable. You use the streamlinks link in the description. Yeah, so I I did find something that was switched off and might have something to do with it. So you, it, I've refunded it, so you can try again if you want to resend it. Um. Oh, no, it's fine. I think you left the wrong link in the description. Have I? Boom! <gasps> Soul! I have! Very sorry. Okay, two seconds, two seconds. Let's, let's fix this. Let's fix this. Not that it's gonna... People would have to refresh the... Uh, oh. Dear, oh dear, dear. Um, sorry guys, sorry about this. Uh -oh. That's it. You got that in the water. There we go. I'm glad you caught that anyway, because um, it would be a shame if someone had done a, a, a donation and we didn't see it. Okay, that is fixed in the show notes. Uh, if everybody refreshes, they will see the proper link, but um, the, the, the link on the, uh, the exclamation mark, donate, is correct. That is absolutely correct. So. Sorry about that, guys. Just doing a little bit of a... It's because we've changed everything over, so we've gone from Streamlabs over to Stream Elements and StreamerBot, so it's uh, these little things are still lingering, but um, um, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that, make sure we don't make that mistake in the future. Um, and, yeah, sorry about that, Tense. <laughs> anyway, we're getting closer to the top of the set. So our next point is 9,000 at BR637. Which is a very creative uh, waypoint for. <coughs> excuse me. For the uh, the Modney uh, 6N arrival. So in prep for that, well, we don't want to change it because I notice if you start changing the the altitude up here, it actually moves the top of the descent along. So we'll just wait. But we'll take it down to 9,000. That, that, that happens. And I've learned a few things about VNAV as well, which I'll talk through if you want to fly it correctly. Naughty. <laughs> hey, that's a good suggestion. I like that one, Dark. I'll write that down. Remind me, can you s send me a, a message in chat uh, to, to find something for Naughty? Oh, I think I'm getting a cold. I'm starting to get that kind of irritation on, on my uh, nose. I just want to take a toothbrush and ram it up my nose and kind of brush it around. <laughs> there we go! <laughs> Dan, thank you very much. As, as I was saying earlier, make Tony's Lou review happen. <laughs> oh, hilarious. I love it. Uh, this one's for you, mate. Amazing! Thank you so much, uh, Dan, for that. Uh, I think I think it was a three euro uh, tip by the looks of it. Um, absolutely, well, much appreciated, man. Thank you so much. Defro Borat, naughty, naughty. Oh yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay, we're getting some really weird cloud formations, but it's it's pretty much what the. Uh, not far off with the uh, the Mithar was saying, so. which it should be because that's obviously where the zip's getting it. Ten miles from top of the sun. Okay, 
and uh, as I mentioned, we'll, our first drop will be uh, 9,000. Oh, well, hopefully the landing uh, goes just as well as the takeoff did. Everything's been pretty smooth so far. Um, there is a there is a bump on this runway though. It's it's kind of goes like this. It's almost like a bit of a roller coaster actually. I don't know if that's actually how it is in real life, um, but it's it's not unprecedented obviously because if you take something like Farnborough, uh, that's that's quite like that, isn't it? it kind of slopes. Okay, we can see the VNAV path is now appearing there. So we'll take it down to uh, 9,000. And what we want to do is slow the throttle just to about the top of that, that green bar there. And that generally gives it a, a good kind of descent. Although VNAV's asking us to fly faster than that, so we'll bunch it up. Because what we want to do is try and get the, uh, the throttle around where the VNAV's saying it wants to be. Hopefully it'll all go to plan. Check your DM sent to an MP3. Oh, all right. Okay, I'll see. Well, I'll tell you what. <clears throat> all right. I don't know. I could can try and do this on the fly. certainly set up as a voice file initially anyway. Um, okay. But now it says we're above path. We're not dropping quick enough, so I think Right, I think I'm going to go to indicated airspeed, guys. And we'll set a descent of about 200. See, the plane can hold that. You have to help the plane with your throttle settings to be able to uh, balance the uh, descent uh, for the speed. Uh, yes, it's not set up, Dan, or uh, no, legs. Uh, two sucks. I don't want to get too distracted because I am trying to fly the airplane. <laughs>
Okay, Dan, you can try it now. Obviously without the quotations. Naughty, naughty. Well, obviously that's the wrong... Hang on. B6. Try one more time. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to get a... Maybe get a... Uh, convert that into a GIF one, I think that'd be good. Naughty, naughty. <laughs> Nighthawk is dropping. It looks like he's uh, starting the approach, uh, which starts with a. looks like a DME arc. That's how I would probably best describe it. We are still very high, though, so I'm going to go to V speed mode here and we're going to force this airplane down. Luckily, the cloud's breaking up a bit, so we should have a visual on approach to uh, Bergen. Now, our next stopgap, I think, is uh, its window. But if we look at the charts, uh, I think we need to be uh, between four to six thousand. Sorry, below eight thousand. So as long as we get below eight thousand, we'll still be um, still be okay. Uh, Nighthawk says, what the heck does window mean for altitude and flight plan? It basically means it's a range, which isn't particularly helpful. Um, if we open that up, yeah, it doesn't really give us much information there, unfortunately. Uh, but if you look at the charts, it's, it means you have to be below 8,000, above 4,000. That's why it's probably saying that. But yes, does window particularly help you on here? No. making sure that we don't overspeed, so I'm just kind of having to kind of compensate with the throttle so we can keep that 2,000 feet per minute. Uh, you know, we need to drop that altitude as well, so I think we'll go for 5,000. We got, we got time. Time's on our side. And even it says we're below the VNAV approach anyway, so we're doing good. We're doing okay. And we're starting to get a, a view of the uh, the islands and off the edge of the Norway there. Because we are dropping to 5,000, which is blur transition, we want to set that to 1015. Yeah, don't worry about that. <laughs> and hopefully, we get a, a clear line of sight. And Zoom <laughs> that in a bit so we can get our bearings a bit better. Now, after we go through this DME arc, uh, we want to be at 3000 at Babylon, which is waypoint after Napalm. So we'll probably drop to, I think we're allowed to drop to about 4000. Uh, once we get past BR 30630. 
There's your out approaching altitude horn. Still got icing though, eh? Amazing. Let's see outside temperature. Oh, it's just about zero degrees, so that might go away shortly just because uh, it'll be too warm for uh, icing. And Aaron's coming in. He says, Good day, Willie. How you doing, Aaron? How's things, man? Good to see you. We're just on uh, just on our final, not quite final approach, uh, our, our approach into um, Bergen in Norway. Seat belts on there. Landing lights can come on. And up the cabin. Okay, we got a speed warning, so we'll bring that back up. Probably because we're leveling off. Bring that back in a notch. And you can see, as I said before, uh, I can't remember who asked me, but the, what the plane's actually done here is leveled off. Uh, which is a bit of a like a panic reaction, but I, I, it's, it's not always the best course of action, but I suppose it's better than doing that than nothing else. So now that the plane has enough power, we can tell it to uh, drop down again. Actually, it looks like it's doing that itself, so that's fine. And we go into takeoff performance as we get near the runway. Now, there is a kind of a cut over here, so what we're going to do once we get close to that, I'm actually going to force a heading adjacent to that to give us a bit more of a, a head start, and then we'll use the localizer. Uh, to center the airplane on the runway heading uh, so we can get in for approach. And I think we're starting to start to descend to 4,000. Drop the throttle, use indicated airspeed to keep our speed. I'm not so aggressive. Back to notch. We want to slow down a bit, so we'll probably just take it to the, the middle of the green bar there. Uh, Aaron says, doing well here. I had to get some more work done, so I thought I would do some lurking. Uh, lurk away, sir. Lurk away. We've got our memes up and working again, so we've just been having a play about with them. just in case we descend again under indicator speed. Okay. So once we get on this uh, final heading, I'll actually go to heading select mode rather than uh, LNAV to try and get ahead of the plane, uh, get ahead of the plane and ahead of the flight plan. But we'll just let that stabilize first. That's probably good enough, actually. So put Snoopy in the doghouse. Uh, heading select mode, please. And once we get within about five miles of Napalm, I'm going to take a um, an adjacent course uh, ahead of Bablu. We'll switch over to ILS track and uh, get on the localizer, and that will put us uh, head in for. Um, so actually, Nepalm to Bablu is one, 102 degrees, so that's what we want to set for. We're currently flying um, 151. And we'll drop to 3000. Just 
Watch your speed, don't want to get too hot here. And I think we'll dial in 102 now. So, as it says on the, um, the FMS, that should now put us on an adjacent course rather than taking it. We're technically breaking the flight plan a bit, but we're just doing it about a couple miles early, that's all. Now that I've done that, I'm going to activate my ILS frequencies and we're going to switch over to ILS track. So we are now disengaging uh, from the GPS altogether. Uh, our course is wrong. Our course should be... 70, so let's correct that quickly. Ah, come on, don't do this to me now. Actually, what we'll do is come on, come on, come on. It's always when you're trying to do this in emergency, it starts uh, doing goofy things. We go 170 selected and we want we'll hit nav to arm the locomotive uh, and we're okay watch your speed and go back to notch here for a sec constantly hitting that you just gotta try and keep an eye on it there's too many things happening at once here okay we can see that the uh, plane is now intercepted localizer probably overflown it a bit so hopefully it'll balance out we're still underneath the glide path. Seems to be stabilized. Okay, though. Okay. Overzealous in the throttle, so we'll try and slow that down. Now, my preference is when we start seeing the glide scope move. Uh, that is when we will drop the gear and uh, configure ourselves for a full flap landing. Probably a bit premature, but it just keeps things under control a bit better. Okay, first stage of flaps just to drop things a bit so it's easier to control the speed in the airplane. Uh, well, arm approach mode, glide scope, you can see that glide scope's coming down. Once it gets a little bit closer, that first dot, I'll drop the gear. Our landing lights, alert the crew. Glizer's locked in. Just waiting on that glide scope to come down. Uh, I said premature. <laughs> now, now. Save all that stuff for, for Dave's stream, anyway. <laughs> uh, what a guy. As you know, yeah, yeah, I know you're 12. Yeah, I definitely do, mate. <laughs> okay, approaching the glide scope, dropping the gear. Approach beats about 110 knots, so I try to get down to about 120. Uh, glide scope's now active. really does yank that airplane once the glide scope kicks in. It's quite noticeable. And now we play throttle hockey, which is kind of balancing between there and there. <laughs> okay, we've got an icing angle of attack, so that means our stall speeds will be higher. Uh, but once we drop the flaps, hopefully that should go down. 
I'll try and get around about the 120 mark uh, until we're getting closer to the threshold and we'll try and get down to 110. And winds are going to play havoc on this. So if you get gusting winds, uh, you'll you'll find the ATR really starts to fall over the map. It does its best. And those crosswinds are really starting to kick in now. Uh, Performance-wise, we want to make sure it is an approach mode, so that's fine. That's what we're expecting. Passing 2000. Just check out the scenery. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Beautiful Norway. Absolutely amazing. Is it always warm in Norway? No. Is it always beautiful? Absolutely. Are my landing lights on? Uh, yes, they are. comes down to the business end of the flight. Try to get some uh, buffets from the train. Look at that, just absolutely beautiful, isn't it? All the trees and everything like that. It'll be really nice to see, um, although this, this is mostly coniferous forest anyway, so it probably does stay green for most of the year. But it'll be great to come back here in the winter, I think. Our pilot's taking us a bit slow, a uh, bit low, so I'm going to uh, take control. Just to level us out a bit and get back on the uh, scope. One, one light, one white. Still holding around 120, just trying to hover around there for a moment. Two white, we can just start coming down a bit. Beautiful approach into Bergen. We're going to check out, uh, before we sign off guys, we'll check out this uh, freeware scenery. It's really good. It's definitely been a, a lot of love and passion's gone into it, which is really cool. Now at this point, I can go up and down to try and chase that scope, but actually what I'm going to try and do is control it with my speed, which you can do. Uh, thrust is a good way to control your approach. And again, 110 is where we want to put it. 500. Watching the speed, don't want to go too low. And we definitely want to do better than minus 300 here, guys, don't we? We definitely do. And a little last boost of thrust. 100. see the dip in this runway, it's really significant. 20. 10. Here it comes, now the runway's coming out. Oh. Wee bit of a bounce. Reverse thrust. Bounces are fine, as long as they're not hard. <laughs> there we go. Welcome to Bergen, guys. Great job, says Calm. Thank you very much, mate. Not bad, says Aaron. I'll take that as a compliment. I'll take that as a compliment. I, the bounce was unexpected, but we got it done. 
But you do see ATRs bounce an awful lot in real life, by the way. And I do watch. Especially at airports, they bounce a lot. So I know Nighthawk's parked up over there, so we'll go uh, we'll go and join him. Maybe Shane can take some lessons. <laughs> Make sure you tell him that. <laughs> I don't know if Nighthawk has the scenery, but we'll uh, we'll go near him. It looks like he's sticking out of a building at the moment, but that's fine. Um, okay, we'll just take this gate here, I think. This is one of those weird ones, isn't it? Stop in the circle kind of thing. Which I'm not going to be in the circle, but we'll get as close as we can. So I'm turn the lights off here. And press the idle. Feather. There we go, guys. There. Oh, well. <laughs> you know I will. Yeah, absolutely. ATRs always bounce. Well, I have been fortunate in the past, but it's just one of these things. It, it You know, when you got winds and you got a runway that kind of goes up and down like a roller coaster, it's, it's not going to be the easiest thing in the world to do. But there you go. Anyway, so welcome, Burger, as I mentioned before. Um... Oh, well, it was more or less in the circle. That's not bad. That's not bad. Just waiting for Nighthawk to shut down his engines now. It's almost like he wants to get up and go again. But look at this, guys. This is completely free. Isn't this amazing for free? So, um, Bergen isn't available as far as we know on Orbix or anywhere else for that matter. Um, but uh, our good dispatch dark wanted to uh, pay a visit. He found this amazing scenery on flightsim.to. There is a link in the show notes, so go check it out. You can get this for yourself for absolutely nothing. And um, it's a it's a marvelous job, absolutely marvelous. And we even got some internal detailing on here. Look at this. I mean, compared to some pay where it's probably more on the basic side, but hey. Are you going to argue when it costs you nothing? And look at the external detailing on this. And it's a, quite of a, an impressive airport in its own right, too. I, I kind of like the, the two kind of hubs. Uh, we've got some outbuildings there. Uh, lovely detailing on the control tower as well. Some neat looking hangars. Look at that. You can even look inside the control tower. There you go. I think, as a freeware product, uh, this gets full plus. Well done. Um, go check out Support the Developer. I can't remember who it is, but links in the show notes. It's uh, Bergen in Norway. Absolutely, 100% free. Uh, leave them a like on flightsim.to and send a comment and send you were sent there by positive rate. There you go. Absolutely amazing job. Should we see it at night? We'll just take a quick look at night as well. And actually what we can do is put it to the proper time. <laughs> look at this thing just come to life. Absolutely. Look at the numbers. It's a slight shame. It looks like there's not floods in all the areas. But that, that is cool. How cool? How cool is that? Absolutely fantastic. Job well done. A uh, few details missing. Uh, no interior lighting. Um, hopefully, maybe in a future patch, you might add that in. Oh, well, there's some interior lighting in the main terminal. It's pretty good. And for free? Can't complain, can you? 
Anyway, uh, I think that will do us for tonight, guys. And uh, we really appreciate you coming along today. Um, let's put it back to daytime here. And thank you for uh, flying with us to Norway. Yeah, it is. It's really cool, isn't it? It's amazingly cool. And we'll see you uh, right here. It's just about finished on time, about three minutes late. So a huge thank you to Nighthawk and a uh, big shout out to Callum, Knight, uh, Aaron, Aaron uh, Dark Fury, Notelix. Uh, Stu was in earlier as well. Um, trying to think if I missed anybody else. Tony Beto, uh, big shout out to him and anybody else that come along. If I didn't shout your name, I do apologize. Thank you for joining us. Please join us next week. We will go be going back to our normal Saturday. Uh, next week. I couldn't do it this week, unfortunately, because I'm taking my children to see Comic-Con in Edinburgh, uh, which I'm kind of uh, semi-excited about, but it is what it is. I, it's the job of the dad, ta uh, dad taxi, so there you go. <laughs> anyway, uh, from all of us here at Positive Rate to you and yours, we wish you a fantastic evening, and we hope that you enjoy the rest of the week and have a great weekend. Until then, We'll see you next time, folks. All the best.